All right, here we go. The NFC East edition of previews and predictions. My favorite division to talk about, man. I think probably one of the more competitive divisions of all time in the NFL. The only division where all four teams are Super Bowl champions. This is the NFC East. Welcome to my world, Eric. Pleasure to be part of this nightmare. Let's talk about how we see the NFC East breaking down for 2019. I'll let you kick it off. Who do you think is finishing fourth in this division? Well, after the draft, I thought like the Giants were going to finish like eighth in this division. Yeah. Like I had like Rutgers finishing before them. But then you go to preseason, you see that Daniel Jones is doing good and the Redskins are basically being the Redskins and being a mess. But then the one thing that I remember and I keep clear on is Dave Gettleman and that ownership and that coaching staff who say unequivocally, Eli Manning is our starting quarterback for this year. And they are probably the only franchise for what he's done for them in the past. They are the only franchise that I actually believe will stick with him for at least 8 to 12 games no matter how bad he is. So I think they are going to finish fourth in that division. I love Saquon Barkley. I think they've improved on their offensive line. But at the end of the day, you can't release OBJ and have no plan B. I don't think that they do. I think you have an offensive line built to really run the ball. So if you're behind... And how Eli has to try to come from behind and have to pass more. I mean, you're asking for it. They still have issues at tackle. You know, I still don't think they have a pass rush. They're okay at linebacker, if that. They're semi-okay at cornerback. I think at the end of the day, this is a team that will be finishing, like, picking in the top five or six of the NFL draft. Yeah, I don't see it very much differently than you have it. You know, I think there's a lot of question marks on this New York Giants squad. So I'm picking them fourth as well. Uh, Eli Manning, how long can he last? He's, what, 38 years old now? I mean, it's about time to put the dude out to pastor, in my opinion. He really hasn't been good since 2016. Yeah, Not has, at all. Yeah, he has not been good. I mean, they, they only make the play When they make the playoffs, they won a couple Super Bowls. But, I mean, the last time, the infamous boat trip and then going to play Green Bay. Um, you know, I just look at it like he's done. But the thing is, too, he doesn't get hurt. That's the thing. <laughs> he's That's not bad enough thing. to get hurt, but right. he's bad enough to throw interceptions, not throw deep. You, you kind of look at this team and it's like, this is probably Dave Gettleman's swan song because I just look at the draft picks that he made and I just, I well, just look you, at them. Well, here's the thing though. Let's say Eli stinks up the joint for about 10 games and Daniel Jones shows us something down the stretch that buys him some time, in my opinion. He would have to really show potential in a way that I just don't see it. Because, I mean, I know that Daniel Jones, people are talking about the preseason and trying to give Gettleman credit. It's the preseason. We had to talk about this offline where I believe, not to get too off topic, but the quarterbacks coming in this draft, the last draft, these are young men that are built to be quarterbacks that you know are taught from a young age, quarterback camps. I mean, these guys go to camps with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. Right, Daniel and, Jones did. Exactly. So they're they're built to take advantage of vanilla defenses. Let's see Daniel Jones have to do it with Demarcus Lawrence rushing him or that Eagles pass rush or Landon Collins bearing down on a tight Ryan end. And Kerrigan's on the Redskins. Man. Exactly. You know, we you know, that's when his cuz he has to do that cuz he's in yeah. that division. And I just don't think that he's capable and I don't think this offense is really capable you're wasting Saquon Barkley's best years you know his most productive years the most cost efficient years on teams that aren't going to be good that aren't going to compete for that division yeah I, I'd agree and you know what to me the big question on offense is how just how much can they lean on Saquon Barkley and where's that going to get you dude had over 1300 yards 11 touchdowns last season he can catch passes out of the backfield I mean he's a do-it-all type of back He's explosive, big play waiting to happen. Um, you have uh, Evan Ingram at tight end, who is another playmaker. He's a bit more up and down. He's been injured the last couple of years that he's played. So let's see how if he can stay healthy for 16 games. But if so, he's a threat out there. On the other side of the ball, you know, they lost Landon Collins. He's now in Washington. Yeah. But uh, Jabril Peppers from Michigan, right? Yeah. Takes over at safety. So he was like, part of the trade. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like Jabril Peppers coming out of college. We'll see what he can do, but I don't think he's going to quite fill the shoes of a landing mm -hmm. college. No, and then I look at it too. Like the defenses last year, as much as, you know, Odell was a headache at times, you still had to account for him. You had yeah, to have well, on the field, he's a weapon. Yeah. So now they don't have to worry about that. So right. they're going to man up. And remember, uh, the they box. signed. Um, Golden Tate, but he's suspended for the first four games through due to a PEDs. Yeah, so I mean, so, 
I yeah, just, it's going to be tough because now all you're looking at is Sterling Shepard out there. Yeah, and I mean, you're going to have a real tough time in that division winning like five, six games if you're the Giants, in my opinion. I'd agree. And then the team that I think is uber talented, I think they're just as talented as the Philadelphia Eagles, just as talented as the Dallas Cowboys, but this team is just horribly, horribly mismanaged. And, of course, I'm talking about the Washington Redskins, man. I got them finishing third. Yeah, me too. I loved their draft. I really did. I love getting Dwayne Haskins. I love getting Montez Sweat. I think those guys are going to play big impact for them. They've built their defensive line with John Payne. They have, uh, you know, I look at uh, Norm- Jonathan Allen. Jonathan Allen as well. You yeah. know, they've built their offensive line. Just look at those and- names. That's yeah. talent. Young yeah. talent. I just. But what are they going to do with Darius it? Geis. You know what it is? They are a group of lions led by a blind sheep. Right. And that's Daniel that's, Snyder. That, that's exactly how to sum up the Redskins, in <laughs> you know? my opinion. Yeah. I mean, they just, I just don't trust. Not, And it's not even Jay Gruden. I like Jay Gruden. I like Jay Gruden, too. He's cool. You know, they have fun with him. He's clowning his own players. They're, his brother. Yeah, he's clowning his brother. <laughs> you know, they're grabbing him. It's just, they look like a fun, like if they weren't the Redskins, they'd be a fun team to if watch. If Dan it's, Snyder didn't own you know, this team, team, I'd probably pick them first, man. Yeah, they were so, I mean, you guys and everything, but. Their management. You look at how they they how they handled the Kirk Cousins thing and how they they mismanaged that mishandled yeah, the Kirk Cousins, Cousins thing. thing. And now you're doing it again with Trent Williams. Yeah, and you're just you're costing yourself. And again, like I just don't get how, how they get in their own ways like this. The Redskins are a team that are like, oh, you're one of our players. We drafted you. We developed you. Oh, it's time to pay you. Nah, screw off. Oh, you're an aging veteran. Oh, come take millions to be on our team. Right. That's the Redskin way. Rip us off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, the way I see it, you look at some of the names on this team. Adrian Peterson, Josh Norman, Landon Collins, Jordan Reed, Ryan Kerrigan. We talked about the defensive line that added Montez Sweat at defensive end. Trent Williams, if he decides that he wants to play for Washington. And you have um, Scherf as the guard on yeah, there, who's Ryan another Scherf. Pro Bowl player on that line i mean people talk about the offensive lines of the dallas cowboys and the philadelphia eagles but washington isn't far behind them by no stretch of the imagination the problem with washington is the same in 2019 as i said it was last season on previews and predictions with washington it's all about when and if healthy and honestly they're not up to too good of a start in the preseason, if you're asking me. Yeah. And that's why I got this team third. So, I got a question. So, we're down to two teams left. Yeah. This who is where it gets interesting, guys. Who do you have finishing second in this division? Is it head over heart or heart over head? And I'm going to say this. If you had asked me about a month ago, I'd pick Dallas to finish first. But I'm going to pick them to finish second. I'm going to pick them to be a wild card team. Without a doubt, I think this is a playoff team. But I think as long as Carson Wentz stays healthy and with all this drama with Ezekiel Elliott, if he's not in football shape for the first couple of weeks of the season, I think that's really going to bite the Cowboys in the ass. And I can see them finishing second if that happens. Yeah, I I, I see them finishing second too. I really, like you said, I'm in the same boat. Like I had before this whole holdout thing and all this stuff, I had them finishing first in this division. I think that offensive line is coming back. You know, it's going to be back. And I look at like, you have another year of Amari Cooper. You're rebuilding your offense as far as the play calling. You have um, the new offensive Callum coordinator, Moore. Callum Moore, who, you know, is, is putting players in position to, like, kind of succeed. And you look at what they've done, you know, defensively. They've built this. This is probably one of the more talented teams the Cowboys have had in quite a while. On the defensive side of the ball, for sure. Like, they look at, I mean, you for look sure. at it across. I mean, Zeke Elliott's probably the best running back you've had in a while. I mean, you really look at DeMarco Murray's good, but I mean, DeMarco Murray, it took him a while of injuries and stuff right. before he hit his peak. Right. Zeke hit his peak earlier than DeMarco Murray. Right. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. You And you have a better offensive line. You know, they're, they're, you have yeah. some holes, but you have Frederick coming back. You have, you know. I think the biggest question mark is Leal Collins at right tackle. Yeah. There, right there are holes in there that I think that weren't there about a few years ago, but still, three fifths of your offensive line is probably all pros, you know, Pro Bowl type players. It's just the Zeke issue, and it just seems to follow the Cowboys. It's just like you you want to see what this team has without any of these issues because, like you said, I would have picked them to finish first. I was all the way up until even when the beginning of this holdout, but now we're getting towards the beginning of the season, and you can tell me he's training with Marshall Falk on the beach. It's not football. It's not training camp. You know, he's not – even if he didn't play a right. single preseason game – 
he's not getting ready for that. It's it's just too. You can play pickup basketball. It's different from playing in an NBA game. Right. You know, you're gonna really feel that. And they luck out because of division. Their uh, schedule at the beginning of the year is not that rough. No, it's not too difficult. They alternate at all. wins, which I mean, you still have to play Green Bay. You know, you're playing. Yeah. You know, some you of get the Rams. Into the middle and the end of the season. You, you it's have some the tough Rams. Teams. You have the Bears, who are going to be. You know, going into Chicago is going to be tough. Um, if they, I think they play in Chicago. I'm not sure, but you look at at stuff like that, and I just think that this is a team that will will probably play. I think they might even finish tied in that division. They might finish with each like ten wins, but it'll be tiebreaker because right. they lost to the Redskins in week two because right. you know what Zeke wasn't there they're flying high with Tony Pollard and they just get stung right and they both finish with 10 wins yeah I and, can see that happening you know too. and that's to how me I it. It, it, this is this is close this yeah. is close this is, I'm not surprised if the Cowboys win the division at all to me the X factor overall is Carson Wentz if yes. Carson Wentz is the Carson Wentz pre-injury Cowboys are in trouble yes. especially without Ezekiel Elliott if he's going to hold out for a game or two there. Yeah. That's the way I see it. So and that that's the only reason I'm giving the Eagles the edge because I do respect the like, Eagles cha- um, talent. Yeah, and their I roster, do. what they've put together. But I Yeah, but I will say that Carson Wentz is a question mark, legitimately. And we get a lot of Dak and Wentz comparisons, and I really can't say that Wentz is head and shoulders above better than Dak only because we haven't seen him play in the playoff game yet. We nah. haven't seen him make it through a full season yet. Yeah. And I've seen Dak do that three straight years. And hey, even when we went nine and seven and missed the playoffs because of Zeke being a knucklehead, Dak had us on track. And I'll give him credit for that. As much crap as I've given Dak for his inefficiencies, he's been there. And all I'm going to say is, look, if by hook or by crook, Wentz should go down, I will pick Dallas to finish first. But assuming that health is not a factor... I'm going to give the edge to Philadelphia. Yeah, and I think that that's where I landed, too. And, I mean, I was thinking about this even today. I was still like, am I going to put Dallas? I, I really was still kind of in the air about that, you know. And, I mean, it wasn't just until I kind of sat there and said, okay, when I look at the teams as a whole, I just feel like we talked about with other things. We want to see things out. We want to see certain things. But when it comes to the Dallas offense, I want to see what Callum Moore can do because it's all – practice yeah. and preseason. So I want to see what this offense looks like against real defenses and how he adjusts and how he takes advantage of things. We haven't seen that yet. So right. that's a question mark. That's what, a legitimate question you know, mark. So we want to see that. You know, He's going to have to face some tough defenses. Um, and when you look at, but you've seen that with Doug Peterson. Yeah. You know, and he runs the offense. I know he's a head coach for his offense, but he runs the offense. Right. So, you know, that's where I'm kind of going with that, where I've seen him take advantage and scheme things up and, and he is, is fearless and he runs that offense. Well, and I look at their defense. I think they're improved on the defensive line as far okay. as, you know, everyone's healthy. You got Graham. Yeah. Fletcher Cox. I mean, that's already Nick kind Barnett. of. Yeah, I mean, and there's. They, and then their corner should be getting healthy. And I look at the offense. I like the draft. Jernigan's still there, right? Yeah. And yeah. I like the, uh, on offense, I like the fact that they're running backs. You know, they got Miles Sanders. They got guys who are kind of just like, who can contribute. You know, that's yeah. how they did it last time, you know. They have Ertz, who is, what, second, third best tight end in the league. Zach Ertz is one of the best tight ends in the, in the league. league. Alshon Jeffrey, who and, I like. I liked Alshon um, Jeffrey. Goddard is the backup. He's yeah. a good tight end, too. So you can run two tight end sets. Right. You have uh, Alshon Jeffrey, you know, who I've liked f- since, since his days Bears. with Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and then you Here, ha- can I? Can I? But I will raise a legitimate concern. Hmm. So I've talked pretty highly of the Eagles. As you can tell, I don't like the Eagles, but I respect the Eagles talent-wise. But... I will say this. This is a question mark for me. Nick Foles is the one that connected with Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey hasn't had big games with Carson Wentz. And I want to see those two get on the same page because they have not been. Alshon Jeffrey's success has always, or I shouldn't say always, but has primarily been with Foles as the quarterback. We know that Wentz loves his tight end. Yeah. We know that. And that's a big thing because guess what? We know that. Those defensive coordinators, right. especially in that division, know that. And then I like the draft pick of J.J. Arcega whiteside the wide receiver out of Stanford, who I think is a he's not going to burn you down the field. But if they can get to the 20s, if he can use Alshon and Goddard and Ertz in the running game to get to the 20s and a guy, a rookie like this, who's huge, big, jump ball kind of player who can get in the end zone, you know, and just body fools. You know, I think that that's a big weapon for them to kind of bring in. Yeah. And now you have these two big wideouts. It's going to be hard, not just jump balls, but slants. You're 
going to be up against smaller DBs. You can right. fight and get inside leverage. And then, you know, the things they can do. So, I mean, to me, this was a coin flip. Yeah, it is. This, this was a coin Legitimately. flip. This was a coin flip for me. But at the end of the day, I do think that Dallas would make it as a wild card. And I do think that, you know, the Eagles do win that division. Again, they might have the same record or one, but it's just going to be something that, something that happens to Dallas. But, I mean, Dallas is still – they're both young. I think they'll be doing this for many, many years to come. Yeah. Before we sign off here on the NFC East, I do want to ask you one question. What do you think the Philadelphia Eagles running game is going to be like this season as opposed to the last couple of seasons? I mean, because I think that's a big factor because we know that, look, Dak, for some of his inefficiencies holding on to the ball, maybe not being able to connect with Gallup, who I think is going to have a breakout season uh, in the passing game. So the difference is the running game, to me, for Philadelphia. They brought over Jordan Howard, I believe. Yeah. So now I think he's slated to start. And you still have Darren Sproles, who's always a threat, in my yeah. opinion, even in old age. But do you see it being consistent for them like it was a couple of years ago? I'll, uh, I'll, use, I'll say this, and I'll use this boxing analogy. The Dallas uses their running game like a body shot. And right. they will just hit you with it and hit you with it. Sledgehammer. And, you, and they just hit it with By the time you're in the 10th, 11th round, it has worn you out. Philly is going to use their running game like a jab. Right. It's not going to be – it's just going to set everything else up. Right. You know, it's just going to – it's going to be just enough to distort you. So when I say that, I kind of see that as something where there's going to be times where it's not going to be effective. It's not. It's They're going to stonewall them. They're going to stop them. And it's going to be on Wentz in that passing game. You know, and there's times where it's going to flow. It's going to be complimentary. I wouldn't be surprised if if the Phillies running game, when they have big games, it's based because their passing game has opened up the running game. You know, yeah. that's how they're going to be kind of flowing. And I, I just look at it like it's a question mark to me. How long can it be ineffective? Like at one point, how ineffective can it be where it starts to hurt their passing game? Right. Because their passing game is going to lead the way in, as far as their offense goes. But if it stalls and stalls and stalls and all of a sudden – defenses don't have to respect it as much then it becomes a problem but i think at the end of the day you know i look at it as their their running game is going to just do enough to keep teams off balance just enough they're never gonna they're never gonna be dallas i don't even think they'll be the redskins i think the redskins are gonna run the hell out of the ball with Darius me too. guys me too you know i do too and saquon with the giants but i just think their running game is just gonna be enough to keep you off balance like a jab just stop your motion just kind of keep you at bay and then they hit you over the top so, I mean, it's just going to be dependent on that. And if they have that down, I mean, they're a tough team. They're probably one of the top teams in the NFC total. Oh, yeah. I think definitely Philadelphia. And I think two teams are coming out of this division as far as playoff teams in the NFC. 